Beauty Pies, I am Lanikia, and you are watching What Happened on the Soaps. This is General Hospital Edition. All right, guys, today is what? Monday, August the 21st, 2023. Mm, I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I know I enjoyed myself. Uh, excuse me, my sinus is acting up, y'all. It's like so much pollen in Texas. It's very high. Anyways, <clears throat> on a scale of 1 to 10, I... 6.5, let's get into it. Ed and Eddie Main and Olivia. He she comes in from her morning run and he's sitting there eating um breakfast lasagna. Lasagna for breakfast. It's cold, and she's like, let me warm that up for you. Yada yada yada. She's fussing. Not fussing, but she's like, let me take care of you. He was like, okay, okay. Um, so she warms it up, and while he goes off somewhere i can't remember why he left but she gets a phone call from monica she speaks to monica she just updates her on everything that's going on um she gives him the lasagna he says it's much better warm and then he tells her she's a lot like monica because she says she's worried about monica monica's always fretting worrying about everyone and you know not taking care of herself and he says you're a lot like monica um don't y'all miss when the quarter main household you know had had um Lila and Edward and and Monica and Alan and it was just a full Tracy it was just a full household AJ and it, Jason wasn't in there as a you know teenage adult too long but you know when it, it was just a full household and then they had Justice come through it was cute anyways child um He's just like, you're always concerned about someone else. So anyways, they get on his muse, um, what he's been writing and stuff. And he says, Elvis Presley is his muse and he's been writing. So she said, play something for me. And he does. And it's about uh, a siren. And he does. she's like, well, does he get the siren or not? And she, he's like, I don't know. And she said, Eddie, that was really good. It's the first time she really addressed him as Eddie. And she stopped looking at him as Ned. And um, so I don't know. I don't know if they're going to keep him as Eddie. And then a year later, something happens and he becomes Eddie. Man, I don't know, child. Let's move on. Um, but it was a it was a nice scene between those two. <clears throat> so where do we go next? Hold on. Let me delete that out of my notes. So then we go to Carly and Jocelyn. Uh, so Carly is with Jocelyn. And, uh, you know, she... She tells her that she's going to go study the book, uh, Grey's Anatomy, you know, Grey's Anatomy. She needs to study. Summer went by so fast. I said, yes, it did, Joss. It really did. Summer went by so fast and she can't believe it, but she's going to go study and everything. And Carly says, okay, well, enjoy yourselves. And so she leaves, right? Then Carly gets a call from Drew. So, um, of course, she's ecstatic to get a call from Drew because it means he's out of solitary confinement and um so when that happens um she you know she just tells him you know i'm she's glad he got out sooner and he said wait a minute how did you know and she told him about sunny and he said well he did say he was gonna look out for me and he's glad you know um but the call didn't get to last too long um or whatever he has to leave um so when he leaves we see cyrus is there i'm just gonna stay with them and then jump back over to uh yeah. Um, so we see Cyrus is there. Right. And Cyrus is, of course, telling uh, Drew, you know, he's feeling much better. The heart attack put everything in perspective. He always found solitary confinement pleasurable because it was a chance for him to get close to the job. And Drew said, well, I always, almost went insane down there. And so they were just like, well, you, um, Cyrus says, you, you know, you saved my life and I'll always, you know, we're friends. And this, Drew said, we are not friends, sir. And Cyrus said, well, I won't forget what you did for me. And they go on about their business. I don't know. It's cryptic. I, I, listen, I've told y'all on this, on my reviews, as well on my, on my podcast, Nikki is not digging deep into what's going on <laughs> with all this stuff. I'm not. Like, y'all not, like, General Hospital don't want to tell. You want to just let us find out as it happens. Okay, then that's exactly how I'm going to watch it. I'm not going to put a lot of deep, deep thoughts into this and deep dive and everything. Let's move on. Um. So then we go and we see Robert is with Diane. They're at the chambers. They have some kind of case that um that's going on. They're waiting on the judge, but the judge is taking forever to come. So he started asking her, you know, 
And how was the car show? And she said, oh, it was great. We saw all these new models. And, you know, she was just getting, you know how she doing. And so and then he said, how, how did Alexis like it? She said, Alexis? He said, yeah. You said you was going to go with Alexis. You were going to invite Alexis. She said, oh, yeah, I did say that. Um, but you know what? After you turned me down, I did ask Alexis, but she couldn't make it. So I went with Chris um Simmons and he said oh oh Chris I mean I'm sure he or she really liked the car show and she said mm -hmm, they did it was it was great we saw you know all these things from the future and stuff and so she wouldn't tell him if it was a man or a woman I said yes Diane I'm here for it <laughs> so then we move on and we see that Robert gets a phone call right He's like, oh my gosh. And so then um, Diane's like, what's going on? What's wrong? And he says, you know, there's is the DA's office on fire. He said something's on fire and, it, and it's messed up, you know, someone's life and everything. And so then he has to leave. So when he leaves, uh, Diane goes over to Carly's place, right? Um, Okay, so when he leaves, Diane goes over to uh, Carly's place, right? And she's like, Carly's like, what's going on? What's bad news? What's happening? And she's like, why well, I can't, like, I can't just tell you it's some, you know, why it's always got to be bad news? And she said, Diane, what, what's going on? And then I was like, oh, you're so busy. I shouldn't bother you with this. And so then Carly realized, oh, this isn't business. This is personal. She said, we're friends. You can tell me what's going on. So she starts to tell her. Um, about everything and, and Carly says listen I got the t-shirt about you know because Diane is like it's been so long since she's been with someone um and she don't have time for Robert to be wishy-washy in his mindset about do you want do you want me or not I don't have time for that so she's just feeling like she doesn't know like what, what what's she gonna do about robert and, and carly is just like you gotta put yourself out there like if you want him if you want love if you want a relationship if you don't want to if you're if you're ready to date you gotta put it out there um and it, you know it just is what it is but it was a cute little conversation with them and i i enjoyed it um so sorry i'm deleting my notes as i go through Whew, thank goodness um so because of okay so then from there because we were talking about robert we see um we go to anna so we go to anna because she is waking up and she has spent the night with valentine right i said girl how you sleeping beside a man you don't trust like that i be scared and you slip hard too because you didn't even hear valentine leave and he had to take a shower and get up and go or whatever well maybe he didn't he took a shower the night before i'm not one of those type of people y'all even if i take a shower at 10 o'clock at night and i have to get up and drive at five in the morning i have to take another quick shower <laughs> i'm not one of those people that can just be like i took one last night i'm good i mm mean -mm, anyways y'all it's not about that nikki let's move on so um anna is looking around for valentine now i said what the hell kind of spy was anna because she she opens up valentine's uh briefcase she takes out a package that said pikeman it was a different one from the other one that he had and <sighs> valentine comes back and he said anna said oh you weren't here i was looking for my phone she forgets that she had the package y'all that she took out the letter i said anna what kind of spy are you so anyways, Valentine sees that the letter, and he was like, I know I didn't do this, but he they're both circling each other, not saying a word. And honestly, I don't know what's going on, and I'm not trying to figure this out. So they're both circling each other. She said, okay, I'm about to take a shower. When she gets out the shower, Valentine is gone because he got a text from Sonny that said, get over here right now. So that's where he um, runs off to. And Anna runs to Robert's office. And uh, she's devastated about her house, um, her town home burnt, burning down. She's devastated. She said those memories, all that, you, she can't replace. And so together they call Robin. And Robin, of course, is concerned because she knows her parents. Um, so she knows she, know, she knows her mom and she knows um, something is going on. Um, so she's like, you know, she's trying to figure this out. Uh-oh. Oh, she's trying to figure this out, but Anna's just like, you know, everything is fine. Everything is fine. So they get off the phone with her, and then um, Anna says, I can't go to Robin because I can't risk whoever's trying to take me down. I can't risk them 
uh, finding out, you know, where she is and, and everything and, and, and targeting her. So Robert said, what are you going to do? And she said, I'm going to find out who's trying to take me out. And she looks at that note that Valentine had left her saying that, you know, he was gone to a meeting. I said, girl, you need to go over there and talk to Sonny because, you know, he's dealing with Pikeman. You know, it's about Valentine. You need to talk to him and find out. But I'm not trying to. I'm not too much worried about a job. So then um, we see. Um, so then we see that Sonny had been talking to Betty, right? And so Sonny had been with Betty because um, she came in and he told her, oh, I can't let you see Avery um, because she's sick. And she was like, oh, but he still paid her. And so she was like, thank you, Mr. Corinthos. Well, first of all, she was telling Mason, Mason, why I got to still do this? You got the information you need. Why I still got to be the babysitter? Because she don't like kids. Um, So that's when she sees Sonny and Sonny tells her she can have a day off because um, Avery's sick. Excuse me. So then Betty goes to the pool area. Um, and De and Sonny brings Dex from the back and he tells him, follow Betty. And he said, got it. So um Jocelyn, remember, she had to go to the pool area. So she sees Betty just ordering the people at the Metro Court around, like, make my eggs this way. And I want a Bloody Mary. No horseradish. I don't know what a Bloody Mary consists of. I don't drink like that. Um just give me a glass of wine and I'm cool. So she was like, give me a ho no horseradish or something, she said. And and so Jocelyn was just like, ugh, fuck. But she was just, but she told her, drink it on the job. And she said, for your information, Avery is sick. So I had a day off. And she texted Mason and told him that she had the day off because Avery was sick. So she was taking it to herself. I said, not in um a full-blown outfit at the pool. It is so hot in Texas that when I see people with full, like, long sleeve um shirts and, and pants, it just makes me hot. Like, it's ridiculous, the heat out here. But anyway, well, the heat on most places now. But anyways, child, um, so then we, you know, we see, you know, because Jocelyn don't like Betty. We're good cause. Um, so then Jocelyn sees Dex and she was like, oh, what are you? And he kisses her because she was about to blow that man's cover. And so he kisses her or whatever. And then they sit down and he's talking to her about anatomy, anatomy, but he's still kind of watching Betty. And so then Betty gets a phone call from Mason, right? And he said, Josh, trade places with me. And she was like, Dexter. And then she realizes he's following Betty. And um, so she looked, you know, he's listening to her and she's talking to Mason and she was like, oh, fine, Mason, because he wants her to do something. And so Dix is like, uh, Justin, I got to go. And she was like, all right. All right. Cool. Bye. <laughs> you know, because she knows something's up. He tell, you know, he if he could tell her, he would, but he can't because really Dex doesn't know anything. He just knows he's supposed to follow Betty. Sonny has not trusted him to tell him why exactly. So anyways. Now, I told you uh, Valentine had texted, um, Sonny had texted Valentine, so Valentine comes over. And Sonny just like, you sent me that message through end of that time. I was like, why? Like, he said, because there's changes going on in Pikeman, and I want you to know that, you know, everything, you know, still ran through him or whatever, like their communication, and, and don't worry. And Sonny is just like, what you not telling me, Valentine? And Valentine is acting like, hey, no, 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 everything cool, 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 cool. You know, it's nothing. I don't, I don't have any more information. So he said, do you work for him? Mm -mm, mm -mm. And he said, so I'm not going to do this deal because Pikeman didn't tell me who was shooting at me at the warehouse. And he said, Sonny, they might not know. And he said, well, until they can find out, I can't help them with anything. And so Valentine is trying to keep Sonny in the deal. And Sonny said, well, I'm, I'm backing out of the deal. Unless there's something you could tell me that I don't know. And Valentine shakes his head. No, he, he can't tell him anything. Um, and there's no information that he knows that he's not telling Sonny. And Sonny said, well, cool. Then I'm not doing this anymore with Pikeman. That's done on that. And he said, all right. And then, so then, Sonny, um, then we see... Um, Valentine, excuse me, Sonny calls Dex and he Dex tells him about Betty or whatever. He says, stop following her. We already gave her the information. We just got to set the trap on that. Because he told Ava the same thing when she called him. We just got to set the trap on that. He said, what I need you to do now is follow this person. And it's very important. I said, okay. Because y'all know he want him probably to follow, follow Valentine. They didn't say his name, but that's who it is. 
And so then we see Valentin um, gets on the phone with somebody. And he said, I said rushing things was a mistake. And that's it. And I said, baby, I don't have time to try to figure this mess out. I don't care. I don't care. Bring bring it to me when it's full circle. And that's all I got for y'all. Because I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, who could he be talking to? Does it have to do with Cyrus? Is it? No, I don't have time for that. I don't know what he's talking to, who he's talking to, what he's talking about. Why have this connects to Cyrus and Austin and Mason and their boss and Anna and all that? I don't care. <laughs> y'all not going to stress me out trying to figure this mystery out. But when it's when it's cooked and it's ready to be served, that's that's when I'll just know. Until then, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for an all new episode of What Happened on the Soaps General Hospital Edition. Goodbye.